In 2008, Beijing, China hosted the Summer Olympics, spending about $40 billion. Four years later, London invested about $15 billion to host the Games in the UK. But once the medals are given out and the excitement fades, have you ever wondered what happens to these massive Olympic venues after the Games? Welcome to FOS Explains. Today, we're diving into the world of Olympic host cities, finding out what happens to them when the Games are over and the Olympic flame goes out. In the summer of 1996, the International Olympic Committee turned to Atlanta, Georgia for its Centennial Olympic Games. Hosting the Games cost the city approximately $1.7 billion. The investment was part of a larger plan to upgrade infrastructure for the Olympics. The goal was for these improvements to also benefit the community in the long run. The Alonzo Herndon Stadium was one of the stadiums used throughout the Games. It was named after Atlanta's first black millionaire and hosted the Olympic field hockey events. After the Games, Alonzo Herndon Stadium continued to serve as a hub for college sport and briefly as home of the Atlanta Beat, a professional women's soccer team from 2001 to 2003. It was also used in the 2006 movie We Are Marshall. The stadium was owned by Morris Brown College, but the school sold the Herndon Stadium in a deal to help settle its major debt in the 2010s. Since selling in 2014, there's been controversy over the historic property deeds and land use agreements with the Atlanta University Center. So the fate of the stadium took an unexpected turn. Originally envisioned as a long lasting community asset, the Herndon Stadium was gradually abandoned. These seats, once filled with cheering crowds, are now overgrown with weeds and the once world-class structure is now crumbling. Efforts to repurpose the stadium have faltered over the years. Proposals to renovate it as a community hub or for local sports have struggled to gain momentum and funding. Without consistent maintenance, the structure suffered from neglect. Now, all it's home to is crumbling walls and safety concerns. In 2004, the Athens Olympics promised to deliver much needed infrastructure and global recognition to the Greek capital. Yet, as the stadiums emptied, the beauty of the games was overshadowed by a harsh reality. The lack of maintenance for the newly constructed venues and the soaring costs of construction became too much to handle. Six years after the Athens Olympics, Greece fell into a financial crisis. It came out that the government had downplayed the country's debt in reports to the EU. In 2011, then IOC chairman Jacques Rogge acknowledged that the 2004 games had massively contributed to Greece's increasing debt. According to the Greek State Statistics Agency, the national debt surged by over 71 billion euros from 2000 to 2005. Post-Olympics, it jumped up another 145 billion euros by 2010. And the Olympic facilities began falling apart alongside the Greek economy. The Philidro Coastal Zone Olympic Complex was a vital part of the Athens Olympic infrastructure, but its venues are now deteriorating. Facilities designed to serve a range of sports and community events now stand empty or underutilized. The energy of the games gave way to a much quieter reality, with many of these state-of-the-art buildings failing to find their place in the post-Olympic landscape. In September, the Greek government took the dramatic step of closing the Olympic Stadium in Athens after its 18,000-ton steel roof failed crucial safety inspections. This wasn't really a surprise, though, because the stadium had been left without maintenance for nearly two decades. The total cost of the Athens Olympics is still a mystery. Estimates, though, suggest it played a massive role in the economic downturn that followed. While the games were a moment of national pride, they also cast a long shadow over Greece's financial stability, becoming a symbol of both aspiration and challenge. After the closing ceremonies of the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics, a new chapter began for the city's venues. Sochi is a city known for its beautiful coastal design, but it faced the complex challenge of transitioning away from the international spotlight. The Sochi Olympic Park was a massive complex designed to showcase sophisticated sports facilities. Among the key venues, the Fished Olympic Stadium stood out. Its beautiful architecture became the centerpiece for the opening and closing ceremonies. The venue, designed to hold tens of thousands of spectators, initially saw multiple events and activities, but as the world moved on, the stadium began to falter. In the years following the Games, the Fished Olympic Stadium and its neighboring venues like the Iceberg Skating Palace and the Bolshoi Ice Dome had mixed fortunes. While some facilities continued to host sporting events and concerts, others were hardly used. The once booming Olympic Park began to see less and less activity, and the expectations for more international events and local engagement 
never really became a reality. The Grand Olympic Village, which housed thousands of athletes in 2014, was turned into residential areas. While this redevelopment hoped to integrate the Olympic legacy into Sochi, it really experienced disappointing results. The area once filled with energy became a silent residential zone, with some of the once grand facilities struggling to find their new purpose. But not every host stadium struggles after the Olympics. After the 2008 Beijing Olympics, the city's iconic arenas faced a different fate. The Beijing Olympics of 2008 changed the history of the city and its surroundings for the better. The event not only highlighted China's rising prominence on the global stage, but also created a lasting legacy of promising infrastructure. Probably the most memorable venue was this the Bird's Nest Stadium. It's officially known as the National Stadium. This masterpiece of a building quickly became the symbol of China's rapid architectural and economic progress. After the games, the Bird's Nest didn't disappear like many Olympic venues. Instead, it became a very active hub. The National Aquatic Center was another big venue in the 2008 games. It was used for swimming, diving, and water polo in both the Olympics and Paralympics. After the closing ceremony, the center became a multi-purpose sports venue. It hosted events like curling and ice skating in the winter and is a water park in the summer. In 2022, the National Aquatic Center hosted Olympic curling and wheelchair curling in the Paralympics. In the seven years leading up to the Olympics, over $20 billion was poured into transforming Beijing's transportation infrastructure. The city's metro system was initially just three lines, but it was expanded into seven and added a dedicated rail link to the airport in preparation for the Olympics. To ensure smooth transit for Olympic athletes, a fleet of 2,000 buses were deployed and the city established 300 kilometers of temporary Olympic lanes to keep the roads clear of congestion. Plus, a 60-day track traffic reduction initiatives significantly improved the air quality in the city just before the games began. The events also helped Beijing's reputation as a major global city, showing that the Olympics can in fact leave a positive lasting impact. But that's just one specific case. Do you think that the Olympics have done more good or bad long term for its host cities? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to Front Office Sports for more at the intersection of sports, business, and culture.